You know those obnoxious people that seem to maintain their weight effortlessly? You too could be one of those people. All you have to do is eat real whole plant foods and follow some simple strategies that I'll be implementing in this video today. So I'm gonna be making three meals that are super healthy, super simple, and very conducive to weight loss. If you are interested in improving your health, reducing inflammation, clearing out that brain fog, and of course, losing some excess pounds, then I hope you find this video helpful. This is what I'll be using for the first meal. We have some red kabocha squash, minced garlic, black peppercorn, ginger, cinnamon, jaram masala, curry, cayenne pepper. This is mixed, frozen, and then thawed uh, mustard greens and kale with some black beans. So I'm just gonna stir fry this all together and put it on my squash. So for this meal, I'm just gonna be using a stainless steel pan and I'm not using any liquid whatsoever. That will bring out the natural flavors in the beans and the greens. The trick is you just need to keep stirring. All right, so the pan seems nice and hot. I'm just going to add my greens. Frozen greens are just as nutritious as fresh greens. You can use fresh greens if you prefer, but I just like having some available in the freezer at all times. It's very convenient. So I'm just using, I don't know, maybe a half teaspoon, three quarters of garlic. This is pre-minced garlic because I like my little conveniences in my plant-based diet. Yes, it would probably be more beneficial if they were fresh. You gotta make sure you keep moving your greens around so they don't get too hot in any one area. I'm gonna throw on my cayenne. Again, maybe a half teaspoon. I'm not big on measurements or recipes. I just kinda eyeball it. Otherwise, cooking just isn't as much fun. Maybe a teaspoon of curry powder. I'd say probably a quarter teaspoon of drum masala. Don't forget to stir those greens. Whenever you can hear them start to sizzle, you know they need to be moved off the heat. You also want to mix those spices around. All right, we've got a little bit of cinnamon. I know it sounds weird, but trust me. <laughs> you just need a tiny bit and it is absolutely delicious. Some ginger. This isn't so much for flavor as it is for its beneficial components for health. And then some black pepper to bring it all together. You can hear it start to sizzle again. So we're just gonna move it around a bit. Mix in these spices before we throw in our beans. And this is maybe three quarters of a cup of black beans. They're pre-cooked, so I'm just throwing them in the mix to uh, warm them up. I'm gonna take the, the greens off the heat. Make sure I don't overcook them. All right, now we'll just plate the greens and beans on top of our squash. And here is our first meal. I know you're not gonna believe me, but this actually tastes like chocolate. <laughs> the sweetness from the red kabocha squash, the black beans, the little bit of cinnamon and dra masala, I don't know what it is, the greens, when everything comes together, this literally tastes like chocolate. For this meal, we are going to be using some slow cooked pumpkin groats, um, just oatmeal with some pumpkin, pureed pumpkin in it right here. And some, a tiny bit of date syrup for sweetness, pumpkin pie spice, some vanilla bean powder, and an ounce of walnuts. So I always cook the oatmeal, mm, this is probably a few nights ago, but you just put the pumpkin puree directly into the oat groats and the water and you slow cook them overnight and you get this delicious mix of pumpkin and groats. You can do the same thing with zucchini and different sweet potatoes and lentils and all sorts of good stuff. So 
I'll be adding plenty of the pumpkin spice. Probably about a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon, depending on how spicy you like your groats. I'm also adding maybe a half teaspoon of the Tahitian vanilla bean powder. This stuff is super pricey, but so worth it. I've had this for over a year now and I've barely used half of it. So just a little bit goes a long way. And it's so much more flavorful than the extracts. And then you don't have all that added junk in it. It's just pure vanilla bean powder. Okay. I'm not big on date syrup or any kind of sweetener for that matter, but if you are going to use sweetener, it should be this because this still has tons of magnesium and fiber and phytochemicals and all the things that help to regulate your blood sugar as it's taken up by the body. Studies actually show that this has a fairly favorable rate um, on the GI index. So it has like a midsection glycemic load as opposed to like sugar or honey or maple syrup that would give you that spike in blood sugar and be on the high end of the glycemic index. So favorable for the system, but very high in calories. So keep that in mind. Also, if you are suffering from a sweet tooth by any means, do not perpetuate your cravings with this stuff because you don't fool yourself. <laughs> this is just as sweet as any other kind of sweetener. And it will, in fact, keep you obsessing about those sweet processed foods if those are in your diet and that happens to be an issue for you. Also, the walnuts. These are incredibly beneficial to our health. They have tons of vitamin E, omega-3s, but again, these are super high in fat, so just be careful. They are incredibly delicious, so <laughs> overeating them is super easy. I always recommend eating any kind of nuts or seeds in a meal as opposed to hand to mouth. I'll add those at the end, but first I want to mix the vanilla powder and the pumpkin spice. Mmm, smells like fall sweetness. All right, mix a little bit of this date syrup, maybe of a quarter of a teaspoon. I just use a couple drops. This stuff is highly concentrated. So you're gonna mix in your syrup. Personally, I can't eat any of this stuff. <laughs> this is for my baby girl. I just, uh, I can't handle this stuff on my tongue for an instant because it'll light up all of my pleasure centers for my old sugar addiction. So I just stay away from the sweeteners. I can eat this as is. I can eat it savory. I don't need to add any sweetness because that vanilla bean powder and the pumpkin pie spice is just scrumptious. So don't take my word for it and try it yourself. All right, so I'm just gonna move this to our dish. Now we'll add those walnuts and just sprinkle about an ounce on top. And there you go. Now that is one delicious, nutritious meal. But again, when it comes to weight loss, you wanna be careful with the nuts and the date syrup. You can forego anything that I include in these recipes, depending on your um, personal goals and your taste preferences. If you're enjoying these meals and if you're finding this video helpful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It really does help to support my channel and my business. All right, for this meal, I'm going to be using whole sorghum. This is a wonderful gluten-free grain. It's um, super beneficial for your gut bugs. So you're just gonna rinse about a cup of sorghum, and then I have a half a cup of mixed brown and red lentils. So we're just gonna toss those into the Instant Pot. By the way, if you are trying to eat plant-based and you do not own an Instant Pot, you are missing out on a world of opportunity. This thing has single-handedly <laughs> allowed me to implement this diet in such a way that doesn't drive me absolutely insane because trying to make any kind of beans on the stovetop is just obnoxious. They never come out right. It takes forever. It's 
not a very good system. So being able to just dump something into an Instant Pot, press a button, walk away, come back, and it's all done, ready for you, that's, that's my kind of cooking. Okay, so to make this a little more flavorful, I'm gonna be adding this bean juice. Uh, I don't know what else to call it. It's the, the water that I drain off of my beans after they get done cooking in the Instant Pot. So I'm just going to add whatever's left of this. I just use it as a vegetable stock. So it's almost a cup. There's lots of antioxidants and nutrients in this uh, bean juice. Then I'm just gonna top off that cup with water and add about two more cups of filtered water. And maybe another quarter cup just to be sure. The sorghum actually recommends that you use three cups of water for every one cup of sorghum. But that is a lot of water and I've made this many times in the past in this fashion and it seems to work out a lot better. It also says you are supposed to drain off any excess water and I think it's just better to not have any excess water because then you're getting rid of more of those nutrients if you're just draining them off. So I'd like to keep them all intact. Okay, so we have our whole grain, we have our lentils. Now we just need our seasonings and then we'll be cooking some veggies on the stovetop to go inside the pot after the legumes and the sorghum is done cooking. So, because these take about 20 minutes. So you don't wanna be throwing your vegetables into an instant pot for 20 minutes because they will come out looking like mush and have absolutely no nutritional value left to them whatsoever. So we want to make those separately in an area where they won't get cooked for so long and it's such a high temperature. Normally I make this recipe with a bunch of curry seasoning, but I would really like my baby girl to eat some of this with me and she's not a huge fan of curry just yet. I'm trying to uh, work her in that direction though, so we can enjoy more meals together. So I'm just gonna use this all-purpose organic seasoning and I use it very liberally. I don't know, maybe a tablespoon and a half. No, maybe like a tablespoon. And then to make sure she gets her iodine, I'm gonna throw a little bit of kelp flakes in there. For anybody who's looking for a salt alternative, this is a good option. But you only need a tiny, teeny, tiny bit because it has a ton of iodine. And then some organic garlic powder, just a tiny bit. This stuff is so strong. If you get the non-organic, you can barely taste it, smell it, but this stuff goes a long way. So we're just gonna stir this up. Lentils are super forgiving. You can cook those for anywhere from, depending on the lentil. The red lentils cook a lot less, um, or the red lentils require a lot less cooking time and the uh, darker lentils require a little more cooking time. But you'll notice the more you play around with them, you can really cook red lentils for a lot longer and have them still come out perfectly fine. And the darker lentils, you can play around a little bit less, but still to some extent with the time range that you're cooking them. So I just throw them in with everything and I rarely cook them separately. So they always seem to come out okay. <laughs> Okay, so it wasn't 20 minutes. It's actually 30 minutes that we're supposed to be cooking the sorghum. We are just going to press the pressure cook, turn off the keep warm, and increase the minutes to 30. And that's it. For anybody who's new to my channel, I always eat gluten-free grains because I have had a rather severe case of celiac disease since I was in my early 20s. So I don't like to make my daughter's meals with any kind of glutinous grain, even though she does not have celiac disease, she still has that 10% potential of acquiring the illness since she does have my genetic predisposition. The benefits I have achieved on a gluten-free diet were minimal at best because it took me a number of years to recognize that not only did I need to remove the gluten from my diet, but I also needed to remove the junk and the animal products. And as soon as I was able to do that, 
and stick to whole natural plant foods, I was able to not only regain my health, but regain my ideal body weight. That was a huge deal to me because my entire life I had packed an additional like 20 pounds ever since I was in high school, 20, 30 pounds. And now that I am on this natural foods diet, my body is finally at its happy natural set point and I feel I don't know, it's almost like complete or whole or um, the way I've always supposed to have felt <laughs> in my body and like the way I move around from day to day and, you know, just being functional. You can just tell that you're comfortable and you're at where you're supposed to be. This diet has just done so many wonderful things for me and that's why I love coaching people through it. If you guys need any help with this transition or if you have trouble sticking to it like many of us do, this is not an easy task. So if you need that additional support, please make sure you click my link in the description box below and schedule a free 45 minute consultation. It's helpful to just walk through with the process of potentially working together and determining what is it that you truly need and what is it that you require in order to get to the next step. So I wish this service was available 12, 13 years ago when I got diagnosed with celiac disease and somebody could just teach me how to cook this way and how to combine these meals together in a fashion that's not only helpful, but will allow me to maintain my natural body weight. I've helped hundreds of people through this transition and it's by far my biggest passion in life. So the more vegans on this planet, the better. It's not always so clear as to what we're supposed to be doing at any given point in time. You can watch all these YouTube videos and read all the books you want, but trying to combine all of these pieces of advice and all of the different evidence and research and trying to culminate that into something that's actionable is very challenging. So by all means, if you need help with that additional step and moving in the right direction, I have a very successful 90 day program that I'm sure would benefit you in a number of ways. Okay, we're gonna trim this to medium. You never need to put a stainless steel pan on the stove any higher than the medium heat. It actually damages it. So just something to keep in mind. This is awesome sauce. It's 80 ounces of organic chopped up veggies. I always keep a bag of these in my freezer for stir fries and all sorts of super easy meals that you can just throw together in a moment's notice. So these have carrots, peas, corn, and green beans. I'm just gonna toss in a bunch and see how it goes. I've never been a big recipe person because I feel like it just takes way too much energy <laughs> and effort. And buying all those random ingredients that you probably only use a couple times a year, it just, it never made any sense to me. I like to think of things from the food group perspective. So I've got my veggies, I've got my whole grains and my lentils cooking, plenty of herbs and spices. Again, the more plant-based food groups you can add to your meals, the better. Peas are also a legume and Corn is actually a grain, so you have the full gamut <laughs> in this uh, vegetable medley. I'm just gonna add some black peppercorn. And then I'm just gonna add more of that all-purpose organic seasoning that I added to the uh, Instant Pot Mix. But not too much since I already added a ton to the uh, Instant Pot. You don't really need any liquid in here unless you wanna flavor your veggies with some vegetable stock like that bean juice I was using. But if you do that, then you are steaming as opposed to sauteing. And sauteing actually concentrates the flavors better because it evaporates that additional moisture instead of preserving it through steaming. So what we're also accomplishing by adding a ton of veggies and some additional lentils to our sorghum is we are reducing the overall calorie load. So we're diluting our meals by adding all of these non-starchy veggies and some additional legumes. Lentils are super low in calories because they are mainly digested in the lower intestine for our gut bugs. But I don't want these veggies to overcook, so I'm going to get them out of the hot stainless steel pan. All right, there is our veggie mixture that we'll be tossing into our whole grains and lentils as soon as they're finished. 
And as far as those of you who worry about whether or not your family will enjoy these types of meals, it's super easy to adapt them to their preferences. You don't have to go making two separate meals. Just make a little bit of whatever it is that they need added to the meal aside so they can throw that in as needed. I know that's difficult with some meals, but for the most part, it works out. But also, I have not made a meal yet that my very much so standard American diet style eating uh, boyfriend hasn't enjoyed. So you'd be surprised what people are open to if you just, you know, offer it. If it's already cooked and ready to go, the likelihood of them trying it is much higher than had you not offered it or cooked it in the first place. And I think people forget that just like children, we need up to 17 times trying a new food before we start liking it. So it's not just something that's experienced in infancy or young childhood. It's also something that we continue throughout our lifetime. So every time we try a new food, it takes approximately 11 to 17 times of trying it before we start adapting our palate and incorporating it into our diet. So sneak those veggies in any way that you can. So I'll also be adding some sesame seeds to the vegetable medley. You don't need a lot, maybe a tablespoon or two. This is more so for my baby girl than it is for weight loss. But seeds are so nutritious. That's really where the uh, majority of the nutrients of the plant are, um, as well as the leaves, because they are um, producing the most chlorophyll from being able to hit so much of the sunlight. And then as soon as our sorghum's done in a few minutes, we will be adding everything together. So the sorghum instructions actually called for a quick release on the Instant Pot, but I have done that in the past and there was a ton of water left over and it just didn't feel done, it didn't taste done. So I let that water sit for a little while. It's always a good idea when it comes to starches to let the pressure cooker naturally release the pressure because otherwise all of that starch comes up through the valve and kind of destroys the uh, integrity of the device. So I let it go for an additional like 15 minutes and now I'm going to release whatever pressure is left but it won't be nearly as um, dramatic as uh, it would have been if I would have released it right away. Hope that doesn't damage my camera. <laughs> I love throwing the lentils in with the sorghum and cooking them this way because it creates this like gooey, almost cheesy consistency with the sauce. So it just feels very like wholesome, I guess you would say, since I grew up eating a lot of cheese and sauces. All right, now it's ready to open. And there's still a ton of water left in here that needs to be absorbed by the sorghum and the lentils but that will occur in time. And again, I don't wanna lose those nutrients, so I'm just going to let it be and mix it all together. Ooh, it smells so good, so hearty. So now I'm just going to dump my sorghum lentil mixture into the veggies that we cooked earlier. I tried not to, ooh, that's hot. I try not to cook the veggies ooh, <laughs> too long because they almost cook a second time with these hot lentils and grains. All right, so as you can see, this makes a lot of food. We will be eating this the rest of the week, I'm sure. When it comes to my boyfriend and his you know, completely different style of eating, he will likely just cook up some steak or some chicken and throw it in here. But other than that, he won't alter it a ton. He enjoys my food almost the same as I do. And since we've been together, he's been eating more and more veggies and more uh, grains, whole grains. He eats oatmeal every morning with our daughter. And yes, they've actually done studies on oatmeal and people who eat it every single morning and they actually find a ton of benefit. It has that gelatinous consistency that attaches to excess cholesterol and estrogen and actually pulls it out of the body, out of the bloodstream. So here's our final product. And as you can see, the moisture has been absorbed by those lentils and the sorghum. 
And then we have all these leftovers to eat for probably the next three days. And by the way, sorghum is actually the least digestible of all the whole grains. That's why it's so beneficial actually, because those indigestible components are able to move through the system and get all the way down to where our microflora flourishes. And that's what they feed on. These are prebiotics. This is a huge bowl full of prebiotics. So you wanna make sure to get your sorghum in from time to time. And millet is the second most beneficial for your gut bugs. So beyond the whole grains, you have your legumes with the two different forms of lentils, as well as your veggies and a little bit of sesame seed um, for your fats on top. All right, guys, this was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoy these meals. Let me know in the comments below how you like them if you end up trying any. And I will see you in the next video.